Hey guys, this is Omer from MMOHot.com, and I'm doing another quick week weekly recap of MMO News, and announces the week ending December 23rd, 2012. And as you can see from the video playing in the background, the first piece of news we're going to look at this week has to do with the Aurora World, a newly announced free-to-play fantasy MMORPG from GBE Games. And GBE Games announced the game on December 20th, and also announced that the game will launch into closed beta in North America sometime in the first quarter of 2013. The game has already launched in several overseas markets, including South Korea, China, and Turkey. Odd that Turkey got the game before our Western markets. By the way, the closed beta is only a few months away anyway. And the game is set in a fantasy world called Aurora after a cataclysmic war between the gods. The game features 8 playable classes and a large nation versus nation PvP style battles with up to 300 players on the field at once. The fantasy setting does seem a bit generic as it's been done countless times before, but players can check the game out for themselves in early 2013. Uh, next up, on December 18th, Webzen announced the second major expansion to Continent of the Ninth Seal, or C9 for short, dubbed The Awakening. The Awakening update is set to launch on December 27th and will feature a new continent named Sarad, the Blooming Desert. The game's level cap is set to increase from 57 to 63, and additional skill books will be added to enhance character development. The highly anticipated Witchblade's dual wielding third advanced advancement class, the Blade Dancer, will also be released with the update. Players can also expect Webzen to host several in-game events to celebrate the launch of the update on the 27th. Up next, also on the 18th, some news from Killer Combo regarding their 2D side-scrolling action MRPG, Elsword. On the 18th, Elsword released a new class named The Sheath Knight, and it's, and it's the first part of the Elsword transformation series of updates coming to the game which will add a new job class for each character. By the end of the multi-month campaign, each character will have a new class and a wide range of additional abilities. The newly added Sheath Knight is the first dual wielding class in Elsword, and again is the first of many new job classes being added to the game in the coming months. And you can see some of the new Sheath Knight's character skills in the video in the background. Next up on December 19th, Blacklight Retribution from Perfect World Entertainment launched the World's End update, aptly named to celebrate the end of the world, which was supposed to happen on the 21st. Luckily, it didn't. The World's End update will introduce a new hero named Kronos to the game, two new maps, several new weapons, and a new AI assault bot. Uh, up next on December 20th, the latest chapter of the Grand Chase Rebirth update launches. The newest update increased the game's level cap to 85, adds two new player dungeons to the game, adds a new character named Lime, and more. This is a big update to the game and a continuation of the multi-month Grand Chase Rebirth series of updates. Both new dungeons are aimed at players level 78 and up, and promises challenging battles. And with the addition of Lime, players now have up to 17 playable characters to choose from. And if you're curious, the video in the background does not show the new Lime character as the video for Lime is not quite out yet. And moving right along, also on December 20th, Webzen announced an update to Arctic Combat which is set to launch on December 27th. The update adds a new game mode named Explosion which combines Search and Destroy with Team Deathmatch. Think Counter-Strike style plant the bomb defuse the bomb, but both sides can plant bombs. And players respawn. It actually sounds quite fun. Also including the update is a new map named Repair Yard and two new weapons, the ACR Assault Rifle and the Chris SV Submachine Gun. A new skill Quick Reload has also been added to the game, and once again the update is set to roll out on December 27th. Up next, some interesting news from Pirates of the Burning Sea. Flying Lab Software, the game's developer, announced that they will be leaving Sony Online Entertainment and relaunch their pirate team MRPG through a new company called Portalist Games. The relaunched version will allow players to transfer their characters from the Sony version as long as they have done so before the end of January. It's good to hear that despite the game being shut down from Sony Online Entertainment, the game will live on. Up next on December 20th, some news from Area Games regarding Grand Fantasia. On the 20th, Area released a Return to Wonderland expansion, which provides players the ability to enchant their costumes with stat boosts. The update also adds a new 1v1 duel arena, a new level 90 dungeon, a new quest line, new weapons, and a revamped casino to the game. And even though uh, Grand Fantasia is still a fairly old game right now compared to Eden Eternal and some of the newer games by the same studio, it still remains fairly popular. And now the next and last bit of news is also on the December 20th and also involves Area Games. On the 20th, Area Games also released an expansion for Eden Eternal, and for those that didn't know, Eden Eternal was developed by the same folks who developed Grand Fantasia, so I guess that's why both games received updates at the same time. The newest update for Eden Eternal is named Everwinter Nights, and introduces the new Dragon Knight class to the game. The update also provides an increase in the game's level cap to 75, adds new skills and abilities, adds 3 new zones, and several new instances to the game. And anytime Eden Eternal adds a new class, it is a big update as the game's multi-classing system allows every character access to every class. Well, that's it for more news, but as for games coming soon, we have nothing on the radar, but as for games that recently launched, Absolute Force Online entered into beta on December 19th, as expected. Uh, so what's worth mentioning though is the game has no IP restrictions, meaning anyone anywhere in the, in the world can actually play on the same TQ digital servers. It's one of the few MMOs to actually be available globally through one service. Absolute Force Online offers a unique mix of both third-person and first-person shooter elements. TQ Digital expects to launch numerous updates to the game during open beta, and as expected, there won't be any more wipes going forward. 
Anyway guys, that's it for MO News, and now to the week ending December 23rd, 2012. Expect just about every MO to host in-game events to celebrate the holidays, so definitely try to take advantage of those. Now if you want to read about or learn more about any news mentioned in this video, simply head over to mo.com slash news, and if you want to discuss anything in this video, simply head over to mo.com slash forums. Anyway guys, this is Omer, signing off.